I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. We're going to do a review today, and we're going to do some setup of the Armor 67 by Maker Fire. Uh, it, this came to me from Gearbest, and uh, I'm happy to show the Spectrum guys how to set this up in beta flight. If you bought this and you need some help with it, Welcome to the Drone Camps channel. That's what we do here. Uh, not only reviews, we help you guys out because binding can be some of the most painful process uh, available <laughs> to this hobby. So uh, even I still have trouble sometimes, and I get a lot of emails about uh, guys frustrated with the binding process. So uh, here we go. Very simple on the Armor 67 because it's Spectrum, and Spectrum tends to be very simple. Um, and the way you're going to do this is if you look really close inside here, and I'll try to hold it in the light, there's a little tiny gold button on this receiver right through that slot right there on the right, just behind the camera. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your screwdriver here, and you can hear it click when you press that gold button down. Listen real closely. You'll hear it click. Hear that? Now you're going to push that. And you're going to hold it down, and you're going to plug a battery in. Uh, that'll put it into bind mode. There's no need to use a CLI command prompt to put this one into uh, spec set bind mode. Don't worry about that. You don't have to do any of that. So hold that down, and you're going to turn on your transmitter at the same time while holding down your bind button on the very top. Now it's a little bit tricky because you need four sets of uh, you need two sets of hands here. You need four hands total to do this. But I was able to do it. Um, and, and you can do it too. Now once you have it set up, what is the proper procedure in Betaflight to get this thing talking in your channel maps? That's the big question that most guys have. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to turn on my transmitter here. I already have it bound up. And by the way guys, this thing is a uh, pretty sturdy looking little quad. It's 3K carbon fiber. It has a brand new camera on here which I'm excited to try out. This is the newer version of the VM. 2750 it's the 2751 so um, I'm expecting that this is going to be pretty good I can't pull it out uh, because it is glued in on the very top they have some sort of like hot glue looking stuff up here but it's black it's kind of hard to see and it does have OSD on here so it's programmable inside Betaflight which is really awesome now you're going to have to remove this back standoff right here to plug in your micro USB cable I'm just going to plug this in real quick Now once you're plugged in, go ahead and open up Betaflight, and there we go, we can see that our setup for orientation, back, left, right, forward, and everything is good there. And for your ports guys, you want to have UART2 selected. That's going to be very important for your receiver to talk to the channel maps uh, and, and actually talk to your receiver. So once you have that set up, click save and reboot and it'll bring you back into the main screen here. Wait till you see USB and it should automatically load but if not you can click connect. Now configuration, this is where it gets important. DSHOT 300 it's totally fine. We have 10 amp ESC on here so uh, BL Heli, all that good stuff. Turn motor stop off and that will allow your props to spin up and let you know it's armed. Otherwise if you have motor stop on your props are going to stay stationary like that and guys accidentally bump their throttle and then they have a f uh, fly up into their face so uh, with the smaller quads not such a concern but on your larger quads always turn motor stop off for sure it's just a habit that I do it's a good habit now fail safe I have it set to drop and that's pretty standard for me I always do it that way leave all these defaults the, the same they're totally fine don't mess with the PIDs at all leave the super rates at 70 those are totally fine on the roll pitch and yaw axis. Now right here to get your receiver working um, let's go back to the configuration page real quick. Scroll down to receiver and you're going to set that to serial based receiver spec sat S bus. The next one down you're going to set that to spectrum 2048 and you're going to save and reboot. Uh, very important as well for getting this receiver to talk to your setup. Now if it doesn't connect, sometimes it'll just not log, log you back in. 
just disconnect your USB cable and plug it back in and it should reset itself okay you say USB modem FD come up give it a second and then press connect and you'll go right back in so now let's go down to the receiver tab we're on receiver here on the left and you should see your channel maps moving now uh, I've got throttle up and down, that's good. I'm going to check my yaw, my yaw is left and right, just like that. And pitch is going to be the right stick, so we're going to go roll first, left, right is good. Pitch is up, just like that, and down, just like that. So if you have everything working in your spectrum transmitter like that, it's going to fly right. Uh, and of course you have your props on the right direction. So we're going to check out auxiliary switches. This is my arm switch on auxiliary 1. I activated auxiliary 1 in my radio. Auxiliary 2 is here. That's going to be my mode switch. And there's no beeper on this, but you can add a beeper to this quad if you want to. So let's go to modes. Auxiliary 1, like I said before, you can see this little gold bar right here move to the right and back out of that. If it's inside this gold bar right here, it means it's armed. So you can drag these little tabs right here, and I'd like to have these as clean as I can get them uh, on this particular setup. So every time you add something here, so I'll take one off, for example, I have all this already set up. So I'm going to just delete that one. So if, if all this is blank for you, this is the way you add things. You're going to add a range here. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to select what channel that is, what auxiliary uh, switch it's going to be. So my mode switch I know is aux2 and once I select aux2 you can see it move and this highlights down to horizon but this is not going to work properly because both of these gold bars are in the same spot so I need to grab this in the middle and drag it back to the beginning. Now this one you want all the way to the beginning there and you can just drag this one uh, so it's not overlapping over top of the horizon one below it pretty important there so go ahead and save that and now when I move my aux2 switch my mode switch it should move to horizon that's gold and then all the way out to air mode right here should be gold here and as you move back and forth you'll see that it indeed changes so my modes are set up correctly my arm switch is good and now we're pretty much good to fly. You can check your motor direction on this tab if you want to. You can plug in your battery and check each individual motor. Uh, but from the factory, this one came set up and I'm good to go. So now we go down to OSD. OSD is full of stuff. Uh, and I cleaned up this screen. You can see a, a little bit of a preview right here of what you have, what your quad is going to show. And you can turn off our artificial horizon, horizon sidebars. Uh, that stuff was in the middle of the screen, kind of like a, a fighter pilot heads-up display. It gives you sort of uh, horizon awareness, but I, I take that off because it's distracting to me when I'm trying to fly through like little small gaps and things. Uh, so I remove those. I'm going to leave my battery voltage down here in the bottom left. It's also going to show me my flight mode right here in the middle and how long I've had the battery plugged in, my on time right at the bottom left. So that's pretty simple for me, and that's the way I like my OSD. Now you can change it. Like I said, you can add as much stuff on here as you want, as much information as you want. But after you do make some changes here, make sure that you save. And now we can go down to the CLI at the very last part. You can type in the command prompt version, and that's going to give you the latest version on here. One of my favorite flight controllers is on here, the Omnibus F3. So we have a pretty new version of it, April 3rd, 2017. That's awesome. If you want to get all of your settings or share some of your settings with friends, you can type dump here, D-U-M-P, and that will show you everything inside your flight controller, all of your settings. And now we're good to go. So we can go outside and we'll do a little fly-in with the Armor 67. All right, guys, let's go ahead and fly this cool little quad. This is such a cool little tiny micro brushless one of the smallest that I reviewed recently, and I have three versions of flight modes on here, running beta flight. And this one's so cool because it's running 2S. This is essentially like a 2S whoop. This thing is way, way tiny. The little props, you don't even need to have screws on those because you can just press fit them on. And this, these motors aren't powerful enough to throw those props off. 
And what's really cool about it is I can get in and do close proximity flying like this uh, around smaller objects close in and I can kind of explore places that I normally wouldn't with something like a 90 size quad or even a 120 most definitely. Almost like that tiny whoop scale. I'm very, very similar to the tiny whoop scale. I'm just kind of cruising and check out that y'all snap right there coming in a little close to those weeds and I don't feel like this one flips as good and recovers from flips as good as something like a 90 size quad um, mainly because the the props are quite small on this quad so um, the smaller they are you know obviously the less we're gonna have a good recovery from a flip or some type of uh, power loop but it flies like a it flies a lot like a tiny whoop just with a lot more power so here i am gonna try out the second battery um, that last one was a little bit low when i took off so I'm in air mode and the camera is pretty decent on this it's not bad it's actually a pretty good camera and this is one of the higher quality frames that i've seen lately uh, this one is all carbon fiber with bumpers and the cool thing about it is that it does have those bumpers I didn't break a single prop during any of my batteries. I flew probably like 10 batteries with this I flew all of my 2s 300 milliamps on it uh, That's probably a good size if you guys are looking for uh, wondering what type of battery to fly with this maker fire 67 and It does fly pretty decently well in air mode Just kind of cruising around And I don't have a beeper on this one, so that's uh, something I'm gonna keep in kind of close and probably not fly over tall grass. Definitely wanna fly somewhere where there's a nice little kind of open field, like a little ballpark is almost perfect. Right here, I'm gonna try some close in proximity flying. Yep, bumped off the battery. Sometimes with the prop guards, you can keep flying like that. And look at this over and under with this little fence here. This is super cool so super low to the ground and i've got prop guard so i'm really not worried about hitting this pole i did hit it a couple times and it just bounced right off but a really cool fun little quad super lightweight and i'm getting used to flying it a little more and i think once you get used to flying this one this one would be a lot of fun really enjoyable so thanks for watching this review, you guys. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.